We're now in the head of the left hand fork of Cow Creek with the old Johnny Noble residence. And I can look from where I'm sitting and see Breathitt County right in the head of the Walter Baker holler, if anybody knows where Houston is. What I want to talk about today, this is the spot where my grandfather killed Johnny Noble. Johnny was my great grandfather and Simon McIntosh was my grandpa. This fight took place in 1940. They were all making moonshine whiskey and they had some fights. My daddy and his uncles who were Johnny's boys and Simon got mad because they whipped my daddy and my uncle and he came up here. He walked I'd say from where we, I showed Josh where he lived, Simon, and he walked, I'd say, two miles. And when he got up here where Johnny's residence was, there's a woodshed set right there. Johnny was out in the wood yard splitting wood. And they said he told Simon, said, let's go in and eat. He shot him right in this sink place right here in his neck, shot him right under his eye, and both eyes jumped out. And Johnny had his gun out, and when the bullet hit Johnny, Johnny's gun fired. He shot my grandpa in the intestines. So the boys run out of that house there. Johnny had four or five boys. They began to shoot my grandpa, Simon McIntosh. Shot him with a 25 automatic. One fired from over there with a shotgun. Hit him with a shotgun, the shots. He had a 44 special, my grandpa Simon McIntosh did, with a six inch barrel and he only had four shells in the pistol. Coming up the road, he crossed the creek and went to Price Hall's. Told Price's wife, said, I want to borrow Price's pistol. She said, Simon, Price won't loan his gun. He reached up on the wall and got it down. It's on a nail, a hanging on a nail. He comes straight on up here and killed him. Then he walked from right here a half a mile down the creek. He never did fall. A lot of those shots he shot through the neck and just flash wounds. He walked to Jeff Baker's nearly a half a mile and Harrod Noble was there. Harrod had a panel truck. They put him in that panel truck and took him to Paul Galbert's down on Highway 28 Harold Galbert had a flatbed truck, ton and a half. They put a bed up on that truck, a feather bed and a bed, put him on there, and Ralph Reynolds and Howard Galbert took him to the Patty A. Clay Hospital in Richmond. Of course, Simon's brothers had come, and they sat with him in chairs beside of the bed. And when they got down there in the hospital, they laid him on the table. He asked them, said, where's Johnny? They said, Simon, you killed Johnny. He said, poor old Johnny. That was his father-in-law now. He killed his father-in-law. He lived about 50 or 60 days and gangrene got him. The shot Johnny fired was the mortal wound. That's what killed my grandpa. The shot my great-grandfather fired killed him. So that's the story of Simon and Johnny, and this is 100% true. We're now at the Noble Cemetery in the head of Cow Creek, left hand fork, and I'm standing in front of Corporal John Noble's grave and his wife Catherine. John is one of the first nobles that ever come to Cow Creek. He is a Civil War soldier, born in 1830, died in 1913. 
My wife was born in 1827, and she died in 1880. John was married maybe twice after Catherine died. And right here, right at the foot of his feet, and his wife's feet is two, three of his sons. John Harrison Noble and, and Ira Noble and John Ann Noble. There's three of his sons buried right here. And they were old men. And he also had some more children. He, he's got a daughter laying right out here, married Clint Hall. Clint Hall. Her name was uh, Nancy Jane. Nancy Jane Noble. Nancy Jane had a big family in Clint. He's got people scattered all over the United States of America, John Noble has. He's a wonderful man, everybody said. The Johnny Noble that my grandpa killed on the video, that was his grandson. He's my third great-grandfather. And we put this stone up, Kelly Shouse and I, about two or three years ago. It's a Civil War stone. These old stones laying here, and we also put Harrison and Ira on them up some more. Stones, the old stones that wore out sandstones, the weather gets them. I was standing at the old Jeff Baker place, and this is where my grandfather walked when he was wounded in the fight when he killed Johnny Noble. He walked to right here. There was a big white two house sit right here. And John Hall was the man built the house. John moved and Jeff moved in, him and his wife and family. And he walked to right here. The road come up the creek there then. They brought that old panel truck up here and loaded him in right here where I'm standing and took him out of here down on 28, about four miles from where I'm at right now. Took him on on the flatbed truck to Patty A. Clay. This is where Jeff Baker and Mandy lived. Jeff Baker was born and raised at Cortland in Buffalo, son of Black Bob Baker and Emmeline. He was a good guy, a good carpenter. Jeff was. He died in, out in Ohio, Middletown. And this is the very spot right here. We're now standing in front of the Moles Randall Cemetery on the left hand fork of Cow Creek. Moles is in a grave. We don't know which one's his one. There's field stones. We don't know for sure. And also, years ago, there was a Jet family moved here from Breathitt County. They have children buried there. But Henderson Randall's, Moses' son and his wife, are buried up on the hill and they have stones. He was a Civil War soldier, Henderson Reynolds was. He's a grandson, a grandpa of Harlan McIntosh and Sidney Gabbard, the clerk, used to be his great grandpa. And they're old people. And Ann Reynolds, Henderson's wife, was out in the yard and throwed a pan of water. There's an old horse picking in the yard, grazing. She throwed that on that horse's behind and he kicked her and broke her neck and killed her. Many, many years ago this happened. Henderson is here, his father, and several different children are here off of this creek right here. Now we're going to turn around to another site here, show you where the hall school used to sit. You see these light poles and things, that's about the very spot it sit on. They use it for a school and also a church house. They preach there. 
Preacher Rob Taylor was holding a week revival and the Wilsons and the Johnsons had a, a falling out and Richard Wilson was killed here. A fine gentleman, they said, and left a wife who was pregnant at the time and a bunch of children. Right up the road is his home place. We'll put it on the video later on. And I, he was killed right here, Richard was, and the man killed him run away, but they caught him later. A bad, bad murder. Too much drinking. Too much whiskey. Cause it bad sorrow. We're now standing in front of where the first schoolhouse ever sat on the left hand fork of Cow Creek. A big one room log school. I remember the old building. It's built by John Noble, Clint Hall, and Minor C. Taylor. Minor C. was an old Northern Methodist preacher, and they was instrumental in building the building, got it all started. And one of the first teachers that I remember them talking about teaching was Jane Hall. She was Wash Hall's wife. She is from Letcher County. Old West Banks' his daughter. West was a school teacher in Letcher. She was teaching school here. Uncle Harrison Noble would have some children come to school here, and Wash was looking through her record one day, her school record. He said, Jane Harrison's got one boy that's not going to school. Well, she said, what's his name, Wash? He said, Frank, Frank Noble. Well, she wrote his name down in the book. They come a check and the trustees did. No Frank Noble, Frank Noble, absent every day. They put Harrison in court. The judge said, Mr. Noble, why is your son, Frank, not attending school? He said, so so old then it ain't got no young un named Frank. We've got an old horse up there named Frank. That was the end of the case. They dismissed it against Harrison. Harrison got mad at Wash over it. Now, Clint Taylor, Minor C. Taylor, was a northern Methodist preacher. His wife was named Barsha Ripito. He got her off of the Trail of Tears, and they're both buried in graves on Bear Run. Anybody wants to find their graves, they can get up with me, and I'll show them where they're at. Where the willows hang down Wild birds are 